Hi everyone, I'm Thomas and this is Power Platform Don Quick. Today I'd like to show you how to stabilize your robot using uh, UI elements and editing the CSS selector it contains. When you um, add a UI element, for example, the first uh, listing here in feature events on uh, my favorite chess site, you can just add it and use it and a lot of the time you know that'll work but it's very often that after a week or maybe a couple of days it'll fail because something in the structure of the UI element changes. So always edit these. The text we see here is called a CSS selector and this text can be edited by double clicking. You can see when I get this editor up I have the different elements uh, in the website is a tree structure starting with the whole website. This is a body element, then a division element, division, division, all the way down to the span element that actually contains the text that I want to read. Uh, in actuality, we don't need all these activated. We can uh, deactivate them, and now I'm just looking on the website for a span element with the class event text pry. So now the question is, how will I know if uh, that element is enough and isn't it or so on. So what I usually do on uh, the website, I'll hit F12 and that'll give me the dev tool. Now the dev tool is used to inspect the uh, HTML elements, well, the different elements on, on the site. I can use this uh, in the top left tool to get me to the element. And here is the, uh, the element that I added. And it doesn't look that unique, so probably there are more span elements with uh, the attribute class event text prior. You can see all the different um, element types are here in purple, the division, 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 and so on and so on. And all the attributes are next to it. We usually don't want to use a class attribute to do anything because a class is very broad and a lot of elements will have the same class. We like to use IDs, names, or uh, what have you. So what I do is that I look for something in this tree structure that actually is unique. And there's a bunch of stuff actually. There's this dashboard featured event. That's not there's the featured live. And mm, I can see all of this is embedded into a section um, with uh, the class attribute, content box, small planning, featured event. So this is perfect. I'll use this section to identify the, identify the box and within that I can look for my span element. So, section element, there it is. And it contains all this stuff, the section element. But maybe the programmer will actually change this class. So, I think I'll edit this to using a contains featured events. So now Power Automate is only looking for a section element which contains the class attribute containing the featured event string. Well, this is perfect. Now I'm in the correct box when I have this activated and now I can just uh, turn on my span element and uh, let's see how this goes. I have added a launch Chrome attached running instance so I don't have to start up a new website every time. I want to test this. Uh, and identify it by title, the drop down will come down and just give you the available uh, browser tabs you have open. And next, uh, get details of element on the actual element. Now, always rename the element after you've added it because there's a lot of them and you have to have a good overview. So I'll call this first event because it's the top event in the box. Right, you can see it's even marking this. So it gets the correct text. That's brilliant. But why did it actually get the correct text? If you take a look at the um, span elements here, event text prime, event text sec, there's actually more of them here. So why did it get the correct one? Well, when Power Automate finds two different elements that are actually uh, described the same, uh, it just chooses the first one it can find. So the top one is here, and that's the way I'll know I'll always get the, the, the first event in, the, in that box. But what if I want to read the second event or the third event? Well, in order to do that, I can use something called ordinals. Ordinal is not something, it's not an attribute. Attributes, it's not, you can see ordinals here. Uh, 
anywhere in any of the elements, but an ordinal is the order some element is in a box. So in this division that has ID, ID featured live, there's a bunch of A elements. And you can tell Power Automate that I would like the second A element within this box. So let's try to do that by editing our UI element. Well, this here is the box. Uh, marking this section, we already know that we are in the correct uh, section. So within this, we can say, OK, I'd like the division with, uh, with the featured live ID. That's the, um, that's the box containing all of the live events. And here, anchor, that's the A elements that we were looking at. So the anchor elements, I can activate them. And you see this has ordinal 0, 0 index. So that means it's the first A element uh, in this division. But I can always do this one. Uh, so now I get the second one. I don't even have to include the class and I shouldn't include it if I don't need it. As little as possible, always. And now I should get, yeah, this should work. Let's try it out. Super bet, Chessic Classic. Yep, that's the correct one. Perfect, it works. Now this next exercise could be to uh, check what all the uh, events actually are um, by looping over them. And that is very easily done. You know, I'll just choose a standard loop and start from zero. The uh, loop index here will be, uh, let's just say three, the first three, sorry. The loop index here will be the uh, numbered event. So event number, pick one. Well, and editing this uh, should be quite easy. We can choose the A element and insert a variable in the ordinal place. Um, but doing it like this, just inserting a variable here sometimes bugs out. And it's, it's like it really doesn't work when I insert a, a variable in the editor like this. So I have to change it to custom and do it like this. Uh, I'm assuming this bug will be fixed at one point. All right, let's check it out. Okay, so first it reads the first event text. And now the second event text and the third. And I don't have to scroll down, you know, it reads the text from these uh, guys here. So it doesn't matter what you can actually see in the web page. I could keep going if I wanted to. So uh, awesome. Now, the next thing I want to talk about is what if I want to check if an event is actually there on uh, on the screen. So let's say um, this Sunday study with uh, Fidia Master Midas Ratsma. If uh, I want to check if that element is actually there, what I'm looking for is not the uh, element type or the attributes, it's the text within the element. So let's check it out. How that is. Now, when you see this um, overview here, element overview, you can see the actual text in the website contained like this. You know, you start a span element and then the span element ends, and within that span element, this text is here. So, what I want to do is search for a span element with uh, attribute class equal event text pry, but make sure that it has this text inside it. Now, um, that is very possible. Let me delete all this, add a new element. Like this, copy the text that's within, open it, and just get rid of all this redundant stuff. Now I just have a span with this class. And as we talked about, that's a lot of them. But I can use a CSS operator or contains and enter the text that I'm looking for. Now, this contains operator, note the syntax, it's a colon uh, attached to the span element. I could keep going and make more uh, element if I want, uh, elements if I wanted to. And this is actually looking for the text on the website, very hand, uh, handy.
Now the plan is to check if the uh, event is actually happening. So checking if the element is on the website. Of course, I'll first edit the name. And in order to check it, I'll use this specialized if sentence if web uh, page contains uh, yes contains element, and I'll choose my event element. And if it does. Put in this display message so we know that it's actually entering the uh, if sentence and running it. Perfect. So that's where I can check if the uh, element, uh, event is happening. Now let's just change this just a tiny bit. W E in the middle of study, and then nothing's happening. All right. I hope this helps, and hope you all have a good day. Goodbye.